All right, welcome to 22-3, where we are going to talk about a new financial statement. Um, it's called a statement of cash flows, um, specifically looking at it for a merchandising business that's organized as a corporation. So, um, in addition to the three that we've learned about so far, um, corporations are also required to prepare one additional statement which addresses changes specifically in a business's cash for that fiscal period. So we call cash flow um, the cash receipts and the cash payments of a company. Anytime we have cash receipts, cash payments, um, you'll hear them referred to as cash flow. And that's what they're talking about. Um, so the statement of cash flow is actually a financial statement that summarizes cash receipts and cash payments resulting from business activities during a fiscal period. With that being said, the statement of cash flow is prepared in a way that is very different from the other three financial statements. And mainly, that major way is the basis that it uses. And what I mean by that is back in accounting one, we talked about the accrual basis of accounting, and we talked about cash basis of accounting. Um, the accrual basis is what we have done up until this point, right? So revenues are recorded when they're earned, not when cash is received and expenses are included when they're incurred, not when cash is received. So we do that on the income statement, on the balance sheet, and on the statement of stockholders' equity. However, the statement of cash flows is prepared using the cash basis of accounting. So with that being said, a statement of cash flows only reports inflows and outflows of cash, and then excludes all other business transactions that don't affect cash. So that's really all we're looking at is where is the cash going, when is it coming in, when is it going out. <clears throat> now the purpose of the statement of cash flows is to provide really important information to external parties like a corporation's stockholders and a corporation's creditors. And what I mean by that is that you can have a business that looks really good on paper, meaning it looks like it has really impressive profits, its net income is really high, um, but that company may experience a cash shortage and have difficulty paying its bills. And the reason being is that, um, remember, you can have sales, but if your sales, a lot of those sales are on credit, meaning people don't pay you right away, that's going to result in a shortage of cash. Um, so the statement of cash flows actually allows us to read a little more um, closely into understanding how cash is acquired and how it gets used by a company. Now the statement of cash flows is actually divided into three sections. Um, the cash flows for each of these sections are calculated by analyzing the information presented in the ledger accounts and other financial statements of the company. So you actually can't do the statement of cash flows until you've done and updated all of your ledger accounts and you've done your other three financial statements because we need all of those to be able to create our statement of cash flows. So our first section is cash flows from operating activities. And so this is where we look at cash receipts and payments that are necessary to operate a business on the day to day. OK, um, what we're looking at here um, are trying to examine the operating activities to determine if our company makes enough cash to support our future investments as well as our long term profitability. Our second section looks at our investing activities. So this is any time that we are um, making the sale or purchase of assets that are used to earn revenue over a period of time. Um, so what we're looking at here is the investing activities to try to assess whether our company is going to be financially strong in the future, as well as the profitability of a business. Um, because, for example, if you're not bringing in enough money from operating, which was our first one, um, and you have to end up selling buildings or equipment, which is our assets, in order to raise cash to continue to operate your business, pretty soon you're going to run out of assets, um, and then you're going to be in trouble. So that's what the second one is looking at, is our investing activities. And, of course, the third one is going to be financing. So any cash receipts and payments that revolve around debt or equity transactions. Um, so this usually relates to the borrowing of money from our creditors, as well as making payments back and then selling stock and paying dividends all fall under our financing activities. And essentially what we're trying to look at here 
is to make sure that there is an adequate balance that exists in our cash account. So here um, is just a little table that gives some examples of the cash inflows and outflows that might result in any of these three activities. So operating, of course, you could have the sale of merchandise, um, receiving interest income or receiving rent income. Um, our outflows are looking at our daily operations like paying for advertising, paying for insurance, um, interest, inventory, rent, salaries, taxes, and utilities. Um, when it comes to investing, any sort of the sale of anything obviously is going to be money coming in for us and obviously cash outflows would be any of the purchase of those long-term assets like store equipment, office equipment, um, land, buildings, things like that. Um, and lastly, our financing cash inflows here, we're looking at any time that we release stock, um, any time we issue notes payable, bonds, or borrowing cash against a line of credit, that's all money coming into us. And of course, cash outflows would be making payments on any one of those long-term um, notes or stock or bonds. So um, when we look at doing um, our statement of cash flows, there are two methods and you don't necessarily need to know how to do these two methods. Um, there's just the direct method and the indirect method. Regardless of which one you use, your result is going to be the same, just know that. Um, we're gonna show you the direct method. The indirect method has to do with um, using your net income and then working backwards to find all of your cash. Um, it's a little bit cumbersome, so we're gonna show you your, the direct method. Um, and have us create our statement of cash flows from that. So um, Sun Treasures, which is our company, has three sources of cash from operating activities, which is sales, interest, and rent. So the amount of cash received for each of these items is not the same as the amount of sales, interest income, and rent income. And you're saying, wait, I don't understand that. How can they not be the same? Remember that the statement of cash flows is prepared on a cash basis, which means that the amount listed is the total amount of cash that we receive for that period. So here's a perfect example. Sun Treasures received a $4,500 check for three months of rent for November 1st. On the statement of cash flows, we would less list rent income as 4,500 because we've already received that cash. But everything that we've done previous to this, like for example, on our income statement, um, we would only have $3,000 on our income statement because that's only the $3,000 that we have earned so far. Okay, if you remember, they sign in on November 1st, so we've only earned it for November and December. We haven't earned it for January yet. That's a cruel basis. With cash basis, we just say we have that $4,500 because they paid it to us already. In a cruel basis, we're saying we only have $3,000 because we've only earned $3,000 of that rent. Hopefully that makes sense. So when we look at a um, completed section of our operating expenses. It's going to look like this. Our heading, obviously, we know about that. It is for the year ended. Okay, then we have our cash flow from operating activities. Here's all of our cash receipts, sales, interest, and rent. And then we have our cash payments here. Um, inventory, salaries, insurance, interest, taxes, and rent. We get a total for that. And then we calculate the difference between those two, and that's called a net cash. So net cash um, is we were actually in the positive because we had more coming in than we spent, so that's good. If it were used, meaning um, we spent that money, um, we put that in parentheses. As you can kind of see here from our cash payments, that's all the money that we spent, so it's going out. Um, we put those in parentheses. Okay, let's talk about the investing and financing activities. We're going to figure those the exact same way we just did the operating. So remember, it's the amount of cash that we received and the amount of cash that we paid, not what we've earned and not what we've incurred. Okay, so our job right now is to examine our ledger accounts and any other financial data that we have to try to determine the actual cash received and the actual cash paid. So when we're looking at cash flow from investing activities, here we have the sale of our equipment and we also have the purchase of our equipment. So notice that we only had $5,200 coming in from a sale, but we spent $405,000 on purchasing new equipment. So that means our net cash used, notice that it is in the negative because we obviously spent more than we had coming in. 
um, is a negative 400,000 there. And then we have our financing activities. So here we have issuance. Issuance, remember, is money coming in. And then payment, of course, is money going out. And you can see that over here with our parentheses. And obviously our net, meaning the difference between all of those, um, happens to be a positive number here at 324,540. So now, after we have those three sections, right, operating, investing, and financing, we get to the very bottom of our statement of cash flows. And what we do here is the last three lines of our statement actually show and verify the amount of either increase or decrease in cash during that fiscal period. So our net change in cash is calculated by netting out or adding together, subtracting, whichever one it happens to be, the total of those three activities are operating, um, investing this should be and financing um, our net change in cash then is certified by adding it to our cash balance at the beginning of a period and when you total that that should equal your ending balance in your cash account which remember you can check by looking at your general ledger so here it shows this down here at the bottom here's our net change in cash which is by taking this number this number and this number and adding them together so we had a positive 25 then we take our cash balance on January 1st, we add those two together, and we get our cash balance at the end of the fiscal period, which is 43,848.68. Verify this by again checking your cash balance um, in your general ledger, and they should be equal. So that's a statement of cash flows. Let's head on over to 22-3 work together and get that done. <laughs> 